In with us this week, we are sitting down to talk with one of the Cookville bands. We have Fat Man Drool. Yeah, I know. It sounds like a weird name, but it's a great band. We're going to find out a little bit about them tonight. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Say what you do in the band. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Raymond. I play bass and sing. Hello, I'm Nate, and I play guitar. And this is Holly. I'm the drummer. Well, you guys have been around the Cookville area for exactly how long, Raymond? Oh, man. 15 years, maybe. Has it been that long? Maybe more. Maybe more. What kind of music do you guys play? If you uh, had to clarify and say we fit into this, I don't think you fit into one category. You kind of cross genres a little bit. Definitely. We've been actually described as off the cuff, which is a category that means you can't really be categorized that easily. Because, you know, we go from country to like punk, standard rock. So it's country, it's punk, and it's rock. Country, uh, rock, punk. Crunk! Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> crunk! I've always wondered what crunk was, and now I know. It's not just a Disney character, it's your music style. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, we're going to actually listen to some of their music a little bit later on, some of the stuff that you're working on now. We're going to kind of listen to that a little bit. We'll get to know a little bit about the band, talk about what they've got going on, where you can see them, as we get to know Fat Man Drool tonight on the 9 o'clock News Local Edition on Rock 93.7. We've got Fat Man Drool in studio with us tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Uh, your more recent stuff leaning towards country. You've got some country flavor in there, but really you're kind of still rocking hard, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love country music. I love all kinds of music. I always say that there's good music in every genre. If you dig enough, you know, you'll find something good. What were your influences starting out? Rush. Plain and simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rush was... Uh, you know, Getty Lee's playing is actually what made me want to play bass because I started on guitar. When I heard him play, I was like, I want to play bass now. So it wasn't Kip Winger? No. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> he doesn't get nearly enough Zappa love. Too, though, yeah. Like I was into Frank Zappa quite a bit. Well, how about Still if we go on. ahead and introduce ourselves again around the room and start out, say what you do. Oh, uh, my name is Raymond and I play bass and I sing. I'm Nathan and I play guitar, a little bit of singing. And this is Holly. I play drums. All right, Holly, as the drummer, what were your influences? Definitely Rush. Um, I'm a little bit older than these guys, so I've got some like old school metal, like Iron Maiden, in there. But uh, you know, there's country, Conway Twitty, stuff like that. Iron Maiden's not that old. They just put out a new album. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> in true. fact, they just announced a big tour of the U.S., so they're still kind of current. Uh, resurgence, we'll say for them. So it's kind of irrelevant. What about you on your oh. guitar influences? Well, uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Faith No More. Uh, 10 CC, uh, Neil Young, all kinds of wonderful stuff like that, you know. That is a pretty wide spectrum. So yeah. that sounds like a wide. Nathan is a B side guy, man. He's like. <laughs> He's the he guy knows... that goes for the deep cuts that yeah. nobody yeah, really recognizes. My albums for the songs that nobody listens to. Yeah. <laughs> albums? Who buys those? You buy oh. singles now. What's... Just me. I'm the only person in Cokeville that does that. It's singles and EPs <laughs> these days. That's what everybody's promoting. So. <laughs> With the wide variety that you have as far as your influences, how did you guys come together to make a band? It was actually me and the, another guy were childhood friends, and we just, you know, did songs together, and then eventually we were like, we need a drummer. Then that guy split, and we got Nathan. Nathan joined about two years ago, two or three years ago. 33% so. more Nathan. Yep. <laughs> that was our little joke back yep. in the day. 33% more Nathan now. So you transitioned from drums to guitar then? No, no, I never, I, I'm horrible at drums, but, yeah. Okay, you well, lost me, because I thought you said you needed a drummer. Yeah, and brought we'll see, him in. It was, uh, it was me and another guy. You skipped that part. To start. I, okay, yeah. I see the other guy was yeah. the guitarist, and he yeah. bailed, he and bailed that's out. where Nathan came in. Okay. But we all lived together in the same house, and, we, you know, it might as well have happened. Just yeah, a there natural was, There occurrence. was one point where there was, like, three separate bands, and we all lived in the same house. We had, like, a little studio in there, and we all jammed together and stuff like that. The White House, that's White what, House. what yep. it was called. The White House. Yep. That, yeah. There was no White Album to go with that White House. <laughs> Just everybody no, practiced that's it. that's a great album. <laughs> that's another that album. Forgot to say album it, reference. Forgot to mention yeah, the Beatles. Beatles. Love, Love the Beatles. Beatles. Yeah. You guys, uh, together as a band, have been together, I think we established 15 years or so. Yeah. Playing music, making music in that time. You've managed to come up with a few songs. Oh, yeah. And some of the newer stuff that you're working on. I think you sent me a track called uh, Dark Country. Country Dark. Country Dark. Mm -hmm. Where does Country Dark come from? Uh, Actually, it just came from me being alone and drinking. 
adult <laughs> beverages influence this. Yeah. I've heard so that about does. more than one song on this show. So and it just came from that. And you know, I've tried to become more honest with my lyrics. Well, let's give it a listen. It's Country Dark. It's Fat Man Drool on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. Well, earlier we kind of got a feel for their influences, what started them out. They've been making music for about 15 years, and we're getting to know more about the band Fat Man Drool tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. How many songs have you recorded so far? How many songs have you written over your time? I don't even know how many songs I've written. There's so many. There's like 40-something. Yeah, we do at least 40 originals, at least. But, I mean, there's so many songs that I've written. I just got a big, you know, one terabyte hard drive, and I just record ideas, and there's so many I don't even know. Are they full songs? Yeah. Are they clips of songs? Well, there's, they... you know, sometimes I feel like that, you know, if you if you write a song and you don't use it, it'll kind of keep coming back, and you won't even realize it. You'll start using the same patterns and stuff, and you'll say, oh, wait, that sounds like another song that I wrote. And sometimes true. you can take a song that you wrote or a piece of a song you wrote a long time ago, and it'll fit with a new part of a song, and you can make songs that way, too. So, Some are pieces, some are full songs, but there's there's definitely a lot of material. When you guys hit the stage to perform, which you get out and do shows occasionally, yeah. how many of your originals do you work into your set versus your covers? You know, mostly original. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, mostly. We so if I go to a covers. Fat Man Drool show, I'm going to be hearing Fat Man Drool. That's, yeah. that's oh, yeah. what For you guys sure. are going to be focusing on playing. Yeah. A lot of bands, they work the songs in. They kind of, you know, mix it up, which is understandable because you want people to get to know your material. But 15 years in, at this point, when you put on a show, it's your fans that are showing up to see it. Yeah, definitely. We do a Blondie cover. We do do covers. The covers we do are are something that we love. It's not like we do a cover to satisfy a crowd. It's something that we personally like, and they're Uh, usually a little weird for us to play. That's like covering Blondie, you know, that's, that's... What's the besides Blondie? What's the most outlandish cover? Most outlandish reading cover? rainbow. Reading rainbow. Reading rainbow. Yeah. Uh, Wizard of Oz. Uh, uh, I only had a brain. I only had a brain Electric in the Wizard Six. of Oz. Electric Six. I heard you do the theme song for King of the Hill yeah. with a special oh, yeah. guest. Oh, who was your special guest? That was actually Brian Bless, the dude who wrote it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, King of the Hill. We dude. did a show and he he caught our set and was like, "You, I, you guys are awesome." And He's like, hey, let's he doesn't something. just write songs for the, for King of the Hill, though. He also no, is he, in a band called the Refreshments. Yeah. The, the Refreshments. The refreshments. Yeah. And he a... set in with you. Yeah. I'm not making this up. This is actually on Facebook. You guys can go check out the video for this. It's kind of cool. <laughs> the cops busted. The cops busted your show. <laughs> that has got to be the most epic story of something that went <laughs> oh, yeah. crazy at a show. It was in a barn. We had the King of the Hill songwriter in a barn in Cookville, <laughs> Tennessee, playing his hit songs. That's what show up and shut it down. The owner's saying, "Well, that's the guy who actually played the song." And they're like, "We don't care. You turn it off." It wasn't actually the music that was too loud. It was everybody hollering. That was so loud that it was just party got a little piece. bit too wild. Yeah. Otherwise, the music could have played that's, on. That's but... a recurring theme with us people. How cool was it though that you had brought in somebody from out to to hang yeah, out in Cookville here? Right. And... I, I thought it was awesome. He's a really really cool guy, man. On the guitar, he goes like do 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 do. Dude, dude, like that, dude. Like as soon as the cop showed up, as soon as he realized it, it was funny. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's you can great. relive that moment. And it's on their Facebook page, and we'll find out a little bit more about where you can find them online. Some of the other adventures that they've had as we continue to get to know more about Fat Man Drool tonight on the nine o'clock news local edition here on Rock ninety three seven. The band's so good, the cops have to shut down their shows because people are too entertained. Well, I don't know that that's quite the moniker that they go with, but we have Fat Man Drool in studio with us tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Uh, go around, introduce yourself, say what you do in the band. Uh, my name is Raymond, and I play bass guitar, and I sing. My name's Nathan, and I play guitar. And this is Holly, I play drums. And the extra member that we talked about earlier was a guest member. Oh, Brian Blush, yeah, he, he sat in with us a little bit. It's kind of cool. He's actually from the refreshments and uh, yeah. lives not far from here. Uh, where'd you say it was? Oak yeah, Ridge? Dandridge. Dandridge, Dandridge Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee. Lives not far from here. So yeah. happened to catch one of your shows popped up. Is he going to do some work with you at some point? Well, he yeah, he said he would be down for doing some leads for us. So we're going to call him out. Maybe he'll hear the radio. Like, Brian Blush, you're supposed to do some leads for us, man. What's up with that? So now we've got it on tape. It's been confirmed. You have a second source. So <laughs> that would be interesting. Well, you are working on some new material. Uh, you've got some things that you're putting together. How many songs are you working to put on? I, I think you're making a full album. Or yes, you... sir. Full full length. 16 or 17 songs, I think. 
And we're thinking about, you know, adding a few more here and there. So. Double album. Yeah. <laughs> at, at this point, you're going for a double release, we could, it sounds like. We could. Like. We could. Definitely. Certainly beyond the EP standard, that's for sure. <laughs> but what's more interesting to me is you're not just thinking about taking some songs, throwing them together. You are trying to chart your way through a thematic record here. You've got an, an idea, a theme, something that you're working towards. Yeah, I think we talked about off air that uh, one of the songs that you have on here kind of starts out with an alien type theme. Oh, yeah. Now, are you going to put that as a running joke all the way through it? Or? No, no. It's just, it, it, it ties into one of the song, the first song that's going to be on the album. And it's Corton. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just Google Corton. K O R T O N. I thought maybe you were going to have some <laughs> testimonials from uh, different trailer parks around the country about sightings and things. Just kind of. I wish. Ty- and the guy from the History Channel with the aliens. Oh yeah, that, that guy. That guy. <laughs> yeah, that's an idea. <laughs> well, no. So maybe you're not going for that whole thing, but you are working on some material to go with it in in the first track that you've got on there. Tell us about that song. Uh, well, it's actually about loss, kind of. That's what it's about. It's um, listen to the lyrics. It talks about a burning sun. And that it's so far away from anything alive that its rays will never touch or warm any living being. So it's as beautiful like, as it is. Yeah, as beautiful as it is, nobody will ever see it. So it's rather deep. Oh, oh yeah. Do your I, lyrics I like, usually, do you usually delve into the deep with your lyrics? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, over the years, I would try to mask my feelings with being obscure and stuff, you know, and like, uh, try to be more honest now. But yeah, de- definitely, uh, I, th- I consider myself an amateur philosopher. So write what you know kind of thing yeah. is where your your music's headed. And what about the, uh, the uh, that's the idea of where the lyrics come from. What about the rest of it as far as writing it, music, content? Well, it's cool to have these guys too because when I write a song, usually they come up with something that's close to what I have in mind anyway without even saying, hey, man, I think that it should go like this. Like these guys just kind of almost do it automatically. So the band basically reflects each other's personality at this point, you think? Yeah. I we, agree. Yeah, we click well together. All right. Well, tell you what, let's listen to the uh, new material from you. This is Yellow Star. It's Fat Man Drool on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. They cross the spectrum, a little bit country, a little bit rock, a little bit punk. We call them crunk. Okay, no, maybe <laughs> I just call them that. It's Fat Man Drool in with us tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. We've been hanging out for the last couple of hours. Getting to know their music a little bit, hearing some of that, and talking with them. Uh, been in the area for about 15 years. You guys looking to put some more music out. You've got uh, a little newer sounding. Things that the lyrics, I think, is probably is what's coming across is that that's probably the part that's changed a little bit for you. As far as just getting out and playing the music, you've been doing it long enough. It's just old hat at this point. Yeah, yeah. You guys have also got an online presence, of course. I want to send people to where they can find you and get to know more about you as well and hear your stuff. Facebook, great place to start. Look for Fat Man Drool on there. And you spell that two O's. Important that we get the spelling right. You yeah, don't end all up, one word. All one you word. don't want to end up someplace. It's Fat Man Drool, D-R-O-O-L. Yep, all one word. The interwebs is a very scary place some days Be if careful. you misspell. So <laughs> You can check out the video we talked about earlier with them hanging out and playing in the barn. Cops showing up. It's all there. It's documented. Yeah, there's videos from us playing... From years back, so there's there's all kinds of stuff on there. Exactly. Playing live, a lot of the first album on. Looking forward to the full album coming and uh, more releases and checking you guys out around the area. When you do your shows, how often do you get out to play? Uh, we try not to oversaturate. You know, it's a small town, so if you play too much, people will get tired of. They won't show up. If you don't play enough, they'll kind of forget about you. So try to like maybe play what once every month and a half, two yeah. months maybe. And the advance notice, of course, comes up on their Facebook page. So yes, you can sir. find out where they're going to be playing at next. Thanks for coming in and talking with me, guys. Appreciate spending some time with you. Awesome. That's Thank awesome. You. Thanks for having us. little sure. conversation with Fat Man Drool tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7.